again. So I'll call the April 11th meeting of the Orono Town Council to order and the roll call shows that all council members are present. First item on our agenda is election of chair. And I'm open to nominations. David. I would like to nominate Tom Perry to continue as chair. Thank you. Are there other nominations? Do you need a second for that one? Or no? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready for a vote? Yes. Then all those in favor of Tom Perry continuing as chair for the year. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Agenda review. Sophie, we are removing a couple of items from the consent agenda. I have suggested that, yes. Yes. 2251 and order 2252. And we will take, we may take those up as new orders and if you remove them, then they would be taken up. You may or may not choose. You may choose not to take action. Ready to move on? Then approval of minutes of March 14th. I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. And a second. Second. Any corrections, additions? I'm not hearing any. We're ready for a vote. We're doing. We're still doing roll call votes. Roll right? call so. votes. As long as we're doing and the it would have to be no no roll call votes as long as everybody's here and oh. only the four people who were at that meeting yeah. can vote on it that makes sense well, right, because you weren't we weren't here weren't yet. seated yet yeah <laughs> so all those in favor who are eligible to vote and they're not opposed and i'll just ask nancy to note that there are new members that yeah. to yeah. So moving on to public hearings. First public hearing to consider a vigilance license for Camp Rep Incorporated doing business with Spotlight Cinema, 6 Stillwater Avenue. So that's me tonight. Um, <clears throat> staff did the inspections. Everything was fine. The applicant has paid all of the application fees. Uh, so, um, and they are not delinquent on personal property or sewer. Do we have any public member who would like to speak for or against this application? I assume that Bella's out there in the space somewhere. <laughs> I am, and there's nobody uh, raising their hand. Bell? The metaverse. Then we will close public hearing A, move on to public hearing B. <clears throat> To consider an on premises relocation application for Chow Enterprises Incorporated doing business as China Garden from 6 Stillwater Avenue to 12 Stillwater Avenue. So, this public hearing goes hand in hand with the next public hearing, but um, China Garden is moving from, six, from the mall at 6 Stillwater <laughs> Avenue to the former Burger King at 12 Stillwater Avenue. Um, they are not quite ready to make the move. However, um, they are um, current on their taxes and their sewer. The applications are in. Um, the only thing that is left is to get the certificate of occupancy, which is probably going to be at least a month out. However, I think everybody's working really hard to get ready for graduation weekend. And if possible, I'd like to try to facilitate that by moving these licenses forward with a condition um, that they're valid once the applicant has received the certificate of occupancy. Makes sense. Oh, the only other... No, no. <laughs> okay. Any public comment on this application? Del, I'm sure would let me know if there was anybody with their hand up. Nothing online. And then I will close public hearing B, move on to public hearing C, which is related to consider a class A malt, liquor, wine, and spirit license and vigilance license for Chow Enterprises doing business as China Garden, 12 Stillwater Avenue. So just as I said before, yep. they're in the process of moving. Um, this is also a transition. They have um, 
their liquor license was scheduled to um, expire at the end of May. It, the state has extended that for 90 days. Um, so we're at the same time as we're doing all the rest, we're also um, be issue, we would also be issuing them a liquor license in that same location once their current license expires. Um, this will require that I write a bridge letter to the state for the vigilers license, uh, which simply says that they had a vigilers license at um, six Stillwater. They have been approved if they are approved at 12. We just need to bridge um, any days that might lapse in there, which might be a few in May. And, and their liquor license that they are is the same as they currently have. Yes. Any <clears throat> comments for or against the issuing of this license? Hearing none. Public hearing D to consider a Class A restaurant lounge 11 malt liquor, wine, and spirit license, special amusement permit for music, dancing, entertainment, and vigilance license for Woodman's LLC, doing business as Woodman's Grill, Bar and Grill, 31 Main Street. Staff has done all of the inspections. Um, they are current on their personal property, the sewer taxes, all their applications are in their health inspections are up to date, so staff recommends approval of this license. Are there any public comments for or against the issuing of this license? There were nothing. We will close public hearing E and move on to public hearing F to consider amendments to the Town of Orono Ordinances, Chapter 20, no. Law Enforcement, excuse me. We are, we are not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. That is going to be postponed for another time. So we did public hearing B, Tom. We need to do E. Okay. To consider a class one malt liquor, fine, wine, and spirit license, special amusement permit for music, dancing, and entertainment, and vigilance license for Wardwell LLC <clears throat> doing business as the family dog, 6 Mill Street. Staff has completed all the inspections. <laughs> Personal property and sewer is current. All their relevant health inspections are up to date. Staff recommends approval of this license. Thank you, Sophie. Any comments for or against the issuing of this license for the family dog? Hearing nothing from Bell, we will close public hearing E and move on to acknowledgments by council members. And we will start over here. Rob, do you have any acknowledgements to make? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Friends of Bordeaux Public Library for hosting their annual book sale. It was really fun to see so many people out and see people in person. I would like to acknowledge Omeland. Omeland is leaving. Um, the last day is April 22nd. Um, it's been a downtown um, place <laughs> for 10 years. It's been there for a decade, a little bit over a decade. It's going to be really sad to see them go. Um, Isis Bellsmith and Holly Twining, um, and there have been other yoginis over there, but it has been a place of refuge and a place of peace during this time of COVID and war. And it's been, it's going to be really sad to see that to see that leave, that space is a really nice space. Um, Isis and Holly have found another space. Um, so that's that's good. Um, another local merchant has offered to let them use uh, for the back, the back of hers. <clears throat> but I just wanted to acknowledge them because I think it's a unique part of Orno and I think it's gonna be, uh, it, it, it's gonna be, we're gonna miss it. Those of us who attend. Practice here. Um, first, I'd like to acknowledge all of the community volunteers that are going to be on our consent agenda who won't be called out by name by just the way the consent agenda works, but we have dozens of folks who from the community volunteering on various boards and um, as election 
clerks. Uh, so I want to acknowledge all the people who step up to do those jobs in our community. Um, I also want to acknowledge that the end of April is coming down the pike. The weather will be nice. We're approaching finals week. We will be approaching main day. And I just want to just put out some positive energy and solidarity to our public safety folks because the not just main day, but the next few weeks are going to be, um, they're going to be a lot. People get high spirited and um, I'm going to hope for a very smooth uh, sailing out to the end of the semester this year. I'd like to acknowledge our Orono High School and Middle School show choirs who have been doing beautiful things in the last couple of weeks. Uh, do not have any comments. I would like to acknowledge uh, Cheryl and Megan <clears throat> stepping up and chairing various meetings during my absence. I greatly appreciate it. And you both did a wonderful job at it. So thank you. No Unfinished business. I do not believe we have any unfinished business. No. We don't. And consent agenda. We are removing order 2251 and 2252 from the consent agenda. And with that, deletion, could I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Approval. Second. And we will take a vote on it. Could I ask a point of clarification sure. about um, how the consent agenda works? Are we voting on all of these items simultaneously at once? Yes, we will vote on all the consent agenda items as one. Any counselor who was uncomfortable with an item being on the consent agenda can ask to have it removed. And that's all we need to remove it as one person requested. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. So Nancy. Are we doing a poll? No, we're not. We're doing. We don't have to do that now. No. Nope. All right. I get. We don't have to do a poll. Uh, no one's on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Great. Uh, um, may I ask a second clarifying sure. question? So the consent agenda is like the whole rest of the agenda here, down to new business. The consent. Great. Yeah. Might I ask that order twenty two sixty two please be struck, as I do not feel. Uh, I guess I don't need to state a reason. No. Great. <laughs> so we will come back to that. I have questions about it. Yes, that's my business. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so now we have taken off 2251, 2252, and 2262. Are we ready for a vote? Um, yes. All those in favor? And not opposed. 7 0. Okay. Tom, you yes. will make Nancy's life <clears throat> so much easier if we could um, start new business with the earliest order and move down. So, so 2251, <laughs> 2252, yeah. 2262, gotcha. and then 2265. You can do that. She wouldn't say anything, but I'll. <laughs> <laughs> So order 2251, order approving, um, let's see, order approving an on-premises relocation application for Chow Enterprises Incorporated doing business as China Garden, 6 Mills Stillwater Avenue, Orono, Maine, to 12 Stillwater Avenue. And we're adding to that order conditioned upon a certificate of occupancy. Receiving a certificate of occupancy. So that becomes yeah. part of the order. Does one of us have to motion that or no? Tom just did. Oh, okay. I'm so confused by all this agenda is the most confusing agenda yes. I've ever seen. But you still need a motion and a second to yeah. put the whole order on. Right. I would to move that that be put on. All right. Second. Okay. So we have motion and a second to approve order 2251, conditioning this this uh, license on receiving a certificate of occupancy. Sophie, do, do, do we have a date? Does she have a date yet? Did you say that there was a date? No. No, okay. she's she is trying and has been trying very hard to get 
tradespeople and material. Yeah. Right. And so this is more about not having the permit be what stops her from being able to open. Okay. Any questions on this motion? Are we ready for a vote? All those in favor? Yes. And not opposed. 7 0. Order 2252, order approving class one malt, liquor, wine, and spiritus liquor license and victualless license for Chow Enterprises Incorporated doing business with China Gardens, 12 Stillwater Avenue. And again, this motion is conditioned on receiving a certificate of occupancy. Yes. You know? Yes. I would like to move that. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. I <laughs> second that motion. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any discussion on this motion? It's for the best of luck. Yes, indeed. So we're ready for a vote. All those in favor? Thank you. And now we're going to go to the last one that we took off, which is 2262. Order approving the transfer of any portion of the defendant in REM, $237, as set forth in Penobscot County Criminal Action Docket Number, CR 21-1497, State versus Payson Viles, pursuant to 15 MRSA, Section 58243, Section 58266, further authorizing the town manager, if approved by the court, to transfer 15% of the funds received to the Penobscot County District Attorney. Do you want to enlighten us? Sure. Motion. Oh. motion to approve. Nancy says no. <laughs> motion. <laughs> we need a motion, then we'll have discussion. Second. The second. Yep. So um, this is a fairly routine transaction for the town council. Um, if somebody is found guilty of a drug offense and the district attorney's office determines that the um, police department has played a significant role in the That's case, the, yeah. the, um, the district attorney's office can file um, a petition with the state of Maine um, to seize the funds when they seize the funds, um, the town retains 85% of them, the DA's office retains 15% of them. Um, the town has specifically opted out of the federal asset forfeiture process because that does not include the due process it, that the state process, that the state mm -hmm. has. So I don't know if you have other questions. And the funds are going to be used for? So the funds, um, if the council accepts them, um, and so the accepting them is the part that starts the process for the DA's office. They won't mm -hmm. file the petition without council saying that they would accept them. And then those funds go into a um, reserve account called state asset forfeiture funds, which the um, town council can use to fund law enforcement activity. We try to use it for law enforcement safety or drug prevention type activity, accountability. Um, and if council does not accept the funds, then they don't petition. <coughs> or the DA might petition for themselves, yeah. but we have no control over that. Any other questions on this item? Sorry, did that? I that answered my question. Yes, Good. thanks. See that from time to time. We ready for a vote? All those in favor? And it is one, two, three, four, five in favor and opposed. Yes, um, I was opposed, and I believe Rob was as well. I was also okay. opposed. Great. Um, I, I think, well, we, we just, as a point of clarification, mm -hmm. like you 
you raise your hand for opposed because oh, okay. you can you can be you can be for <coughs> against or abstain. Or abstain. Yeah. Okay, great. So should we we can raise our hands. Oh, I'm opposed. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay, an item under new business, uh, order 2265. I'm going to read the order as, as you notice from Sophie's um, information that she passed out tonight. Um, there will probably be a motion to postpone action on this, but we need to read it first. Um, order approving ordinance amendment of the Town of Ornall Code of Ordinances, Chapter 18, mm -hmm. Land Use, Section 18-31. Definitions, Section 18-106, Schedule of Uses, and Section 18-131, Home Occupation, to amend zoning and performance standards for homesteads. And do I have a motion? So moved. Well, no, no, no. no we want. Um, so, oh, oh, yeah. so now. Leo, if Probably you three, wish to have here. this postponed. Okay, I, I move that order. 2265 be postponed for consideration at the July 11th date, town council meeting to allow for discussion at the town council comprehensive plan committee. And I do not. That needs a second. Need, I do I'm, need a second. I'm happy to second that. Okay. And discussion. Yeah, and I just, I guess I'll give my vote. The reason for it, um, I, uh, looking at it, I have, so I think maybe some structural questions, concerns with it that I don't think this is was the time to take it up. And it was, uh, I know, and I appreciate that it's been going on. The work, there's a lot of work probably gone into it for the past two, three years, whatever it's been. Uh, we have three new people at the table, and I won't speak for the other two. Um, but I, I would like the opportunity to have uh, a, a vetting with the current mm -hmm. council. Um, I appreciate that and uh, second that I, I read through the draft ordinance and didn't see any red flags. It looks thoughtfully done and appreciate all the work that's gone into it. But I did have a couple of additional like things I wanted to understand questions. And so we appreciate a little more time to consider. Any other comments? Uh, I have two comments. One is that I, mean, I have no problem with looking at it again. I, I don't personally own any properties that could be used as Airbnbs or anything like that. Uh, we're just, the purpose of this ordinance is to make that legal where it's currently not legal. So if if you do hear any murmurings in the community from folks, who, but, they, but maybe nobody is too put off by a couple of months. I think that it's, um, it'll probably be, good to have another discussion about it. The other thing I wanted to say about this ordinance um, is that one of the things that we worked pretty hard on was thinking about how, you know, we can um, create harmony in neighborhoods that have conflict between rental properties, whether they are students or um, whether it's Airbnb and transient folks uh, and the people who live in those neighborhoods. And one of the things that we came up with as you saw if you read the ordinances um, is either having two different kinds of short-term rentals, one of which would be owner occupied and then another classification that would be non-owner occupied but needing to have some sort of local agent. And this is really important in all of our rental ordinances <laughs> because it helps to um, promote good behavior in those communities like in those neighborhoods where there's sometimes conflict between renters and, and folks that live there full time. Um, I just wanted to bring to the public's attention that the bill that is being considered in the legislature, LD 2003, um, we would no longer allow to be to use that um, particular item in, in order to calm neighborhoods. So that's one of the reasons why the, the town opposed it, um, why I, I opposed the bill. Uh, so I just encourage folks out there, if, if you are interested in knowing more about that, there are only seven or eight more days left in the uh, session before this could potentially become a law. So uh, I encourage folks to reach out, to read the bill and then reach out to their legislators to ask if they might make any floor amendments to maybe change some of the provisions that would maybe be helpful in other parts of the state, but would be negatively impacting our particular community. That's for clarification. <clears throat> you know that you know the LD 2003 better than I do. Um, <clears throat> did you just say that is it 2003? Yeah, 2003. Yeah. Um, did you just say that that if passed as is, and I know there can be motions from the floor still on it, 
um, would eliminate that clause of requiring a vocal presence. Is that what you just said? Yeah, we wouldn't be able to put that stipulation okay. on in our like ordinance. We could do it for short term rentals, but, but not, not for a long, long term. term. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Any further discussion on the motion to postpone action on order 2265? Then let's vote on that. All those in favor? And it's six in favor and opposed? Yeah. One opposed. Thank you. Yep. Moving on to council committee reports. Yeah, you have first uh, community development met on March 28th. Uh, we have three items. Uh, Bill Ryder and Sophie gave us an update on town climate action planning and the progress for the Community Resilience Partnership Community Action Grant. Um, it's going forward and over the next several months we'll hear more about that. Uh, we reviewed two proclamations that the town uh, is prospectively going to make in June, uh, the Pride Month proclamation which we recommended adoption and a proclamation on Juneteenth. Uh, and there were some amendments to language that Megan was going to work on a little bit. I'm going to work on a little bit. We'll, we'll bring those back to council. Uh, and the third item was uh, the MRC, Municipal Review Community, update. So he gave us an update on that. And the consensus in the committee was that Orno was not going to try to exercise its minority power to call for a municipal vote or review prior to the MRC moving forward with its prospective sale. I believe that was... Thank you, Jim. Yes, Environment committee. Yeah, sure. Um, so our, our meetings are were pretty was pretty quick this last month. Um, we vetted uh, a resolution um, of a potential municipal resolution. Potential municipal resolution on the pine tree amendment, which was, I believe it's LD 689. Um, and the pine tree amendment was a, is a, um, a constitutional change that is, uh, uh, allows um, the state of Maine to put the environment first when they're making decisions. Um, it's a constitutional amendment. It did not get out of committee um, or, or it did not pass committee, it did not pass through the house. Um, at the time, we didn't know that, but we also, we vetted the resolution and decided that this, the language that was in it, we looked at council's perspective, we looked at the Penobscot Nation perspective who were supporting this, uh, this amendment. Um, and we decided as a committee that uh, we wanted to give it some time. So we did not um, move forward uh, with the resolution. We also, um, Bell also updated us on the community action grant, um, which we also vetted prior to writing. So, um, so we had an opportunity to hear uh, where the community action grant was, um, what, what the status was on that. And that was it. Yes, um, we've got two different meetings um, for comp plan implementation. Um, we met on March 28th and discuss two items. The first was a proposed revision to land use ordinance to define the fraternities and sororities use. Um, I, similarly to the short-term rental, kind of like trying to make a process legal um, that was less than legal. Uh, and that will, go, that will go on to the planning board. Um, we also had an update on the legislative efforts related to implementing the housing commission report. So that is LD 2003. So if you are more interested in, in learning about that, I believe that the conversation starts around 20 minutes in on the March 28th meeting and our town planner goes through all of the nuts and bolts of that bill. Um, and so there's some good conversation in there. Folks wanna check it out on our YouTube channel. Um, and then we also met on April 4th and discussed um, uh, item A was an introduction to the comprehensive planning process and initial framework for the upcoming revision. And interestingly, a couple of folks who served on the comp plan committee, the last one, were in my pub the other night. And I was like, hey, guess what? And they were like, oh, <laughs> we gotta, we have to leave now. <laughs> so I don't think we'll be coming <laughs> to join the efforts again this time. 
but maybe I can work on them and buy them some beers. Um, so we discussed kind of that coming down the pike in the next couple of years. Uh, we also discussed an overview of the contract zoning process and plan development at Five College Ave, the Tyler Technology um, site. That's all I have. Thank you. And the Finance and Operations Committee met on the 4th of April also, and we discussed enhancing cybersecurity in our municipal operation. Um, we also discussed uh, whether or not we wanted to have Juneteenth as a town holiday and decided that at this point in time, we were not going to move forward with that, but we would revisit it again in another, in another year. And we also had a pre-budget discussion. And as a result of that, Sophie had sent out a survey to council members to identify uh, any priorities they had. And I assume that you've gotten responses. I've gotten a few. Yes, I have. <laughs> okay. Future agenda items, items of concern. Do you have your hand up? <laughs> 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 Um, I, future, I don't know if this is an agenda item, some discussed <clears throat> is the public comments. Um, I think uh, a suggestion I have and where this goes, I don't know what committee, but I will say that the school, sorry, I keep bringing what the school did, but they do it at the beginning and at the end. And I know, but I think, I think it's a good format and, and until it's not a good format, mm -hmm. right? Um, until it takes up too much time, but I, Generally speaking, I think it gives people a chance to weigh in on something that's coming up rather than at the end of the thing. Mm -hmm. And not that we're hearing much or we may we seldom do, just food for thought or for some uh, subcommittee to um, talk about that as a possibility. It's just a and beginning and end. We have talked about that before, about putting public comments first and, and one on the top and one on the bottom. The one on the top doesn't address anything that's on the agenda. And the one I think some town councils do it that way, and then the follow of the public comment at the Bar Harbor does it. So I, so I think that this is a very valid topic for right. discussion at uh, probably finance and operations. I don't know. How about we just leave it that I'll talk to you and Jeff, and you guys can arm wrestle for it. <laughs> well, I'm going to arm wrestle if anybody else wants it. But although we have discussed it before, I think we it's uh, good to bring it up again and. Yeah. Good to discuss it. Thank you for mentioning it. Um, I have an item of concern to the oh, wait, Can I just clarify? If you're talking about on the monthly council agenda, yes. right? I am. Though, or are you talking about more in general? I, I don't know that. I, I I haven't. Are they not on the subcommittee at all? No. No. Um, I think there's. I think there's room for discussion there. I'm just looking for what my agenda topic is. Oh, that's all. So I, I guess I meant that for any any and all agenda, because you know if we if we do all of our business on in the committees and no one weighs in and then we come here, I think that's a little bit disingenuous. No, no, disingenuous. Uh, I, I think there's room for improvement there. Or just as a point of clarification, it's at the chair's discretion, and very frequently public comment is allowed at committee meetings. It's not that it's not allowed. It is discretion, but we should talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted a point of clarification. Right. So just yeah, for yeah. folks out in the community are like, wait, what? I, I, think, I think the um, topic that we're going to discuss at a committee meeting is going to be public comments at council meetings. And we can discuss both and we may make okay. different decisions on one or the other, but let's let's make it as open as we can. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. Other items. Sonia, have you heard of? I do, yes. I'd love to. I know um, council in sort of the lead up to the election, and so I haven't been part of these discussions, has um, you know continued to work on the idea of an ongoing DEI committee. And I would love to see that on an upcoming meeting. And perhaps it's already in the workflow, but wanted to make sure that that was in we were, in the workflow. <laughs> we were just waiting to get through great this meet the workshop that we had and mm -hmm. it's I think scheduled to come up on the sixth the a draft charge. Perfect. The sixth of June, which is our next meeting. And, and I have one item that I would like to see uh, discussed. I, I would like to propose that we establish the position of vice chair on our council 
many committees, including the RSU in Orono, have a vice chair, and it makes it much easier if the chair is away or for some reason can't get a meeting. It's it's very clear who's going to chair the meeting. There doesn't have to be you know a lot of discussion or or arm twisting over. Not that there was any arm twisting this time. <laughs> um, also, would be eligible to. Uh, sign warrants as they come along um, when the chair is not available and to provide uh, um, feedback and and support to the manager when that's appropriate. So I'd like to see that on a committee agenda to discuss and perhaps brought back to the full committee at a future date. And I have an item of concern as well. Um, and maybe I was I can talk to Bill about this. Um, since I missed our Monday committee's meeting, I went back and watched it again. And it's the first time that I have watched our, our committee meetings uh, with captions. Um, my, my concern, <laughs> and I don't know how to do this. This is a tech thing. Uh, maybe it's our enunciation <laughs> as we talk. Um, there is a lot in the two, that two hour meeting there, and, and it was distracting for me. Um, there were a lot of miss, you know, there was, and, and I want to say, you know, uh, Rob Glover turned out to be a lover, <laughs> not a good lover, a bad lover, and it was just, I was like, I was so distracted by that, but our people, I mean, if we're having closed captions, um, our, our non-hearing uh, folk would get so confused <laughs> by what our closed captioning is doing so but i have no idea so how to we've, fix that. we've looked at that yeah and the choice i don't know if bell wants to pop in or not but currently it's YouTube. the choice no um we have live zoom captions right now mm -hmm. they're a little bit better on the um youtube um but you can only get that after you post it um to youtube it, it was um, it was YouTube so that I was on. <laughs> but that's the device, correct? Well, no, like, no. Are you saying that the the product that you then put Zoom. onto YouTube was the Zoom caption? Yeah, already uh, on the okay. video. Yeah. So, um, get your act The issue that we have is <laughs> the fix for that is for me to go back and essentially have some staff member, and I don't have any current right, right. room on work plan to. Um, type the transcript right. of that to go back and fix it. By me saying I don't have anybody currently on staff to do that, right? I don't have any room um, in workload. Does not mean that it's not valid that it shouldn't be done. It just means that council will have to tell me that that's a priority and try to figure out a way for us to fund it. And and what I would like to say is a quick glance. I, I don't think that you, that. If if before it gets posted, if it's possible, I mean, it's some of the some of it really needed to be <laughs> edited. But if it's a possible to just do a quick glance and maybe not all of it, um, um, or take a look at it and see what you think, uh, because there are some there were some pretty it, the way that it translated. Um, yes, <laughs> uh, I was I was a little concerned. Sophie. about the way that it translated um, into So the English. option is to allocate staff time to fix it. I know. Or to turn off the, the, the Zoom, captions, the one of captions. the two, or, to, or the third option is to let it be the way it is. Again, I'll do whatever council wants. Okay. I just don't have money or staff time. Right. So we're going to have to figure out how to make that happen. Could okay. it, Go could ahead. It fourth option be that we actually turn our zooms on because i wonder i know you know bell told me to speak up i thought it was that thing so yeah where is the receiver for this Great it's that so i wonder if we just if we all had our zoom running if it would capture our voices better and be more clear so leo it would end up capturing a lot of um oh, feedback and tests is the new um, equipment that we are eventually going to have in this room likely to improve that situation? So it's going to improve the, um, each counselor will have their own individual microphone. So it will improve the pickup. What it's not going to improve is um, 
you know, Zoom is trying to do this live. So it's making a best guess at what it is that you're saying. And that's not super accurate. YouTube, of course, does a better job, but um, the Zoom captions will play over the YouTube captions unless we correct everything. You know? Well, I know you heard Megan's question. Does it have a safety filter so that it doesn't actually, I had the experience once captioning a, a video where it, um, it, it, it said some unsafe words that did not come out of my mouth. Um, so I'm curious as to whether there's any kind of anything in place to catch that or keep that from happening. I don't know that, but I can look into what the Zoom live um, transcript has. Now, um, there is the option of having somebody type live while you have your meetings, but of course that is a, you know, a highly skilled position um, in order to live transcript um, a meeting. Yeah. That's, that's a, and so Belle, I just wanted to, I mean, I, I, it, it, I just wanted to share that that's what was happening. And if we do have um, people out there in the public who are relying on those closed captions, um, it's, it's a little difficult. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing it up, Cheryl. I think it is, an, you know, an important thing of accessibility to be mindful of. And it's the kind of thing that, you know, I hope once we have a DEI opinion. committee, that's something that like a group like that could weigh in on because there will be that expertise and they might have ideas for getting a, a student volunteer to, you know, double check everyone. And then maybe there, there's someone out there who'd be happy to, to do that. So, I, so hopefully we can kick it down the road a little bit, but I was going to say, to put, a, to put a bow on this, I know I can, <laughs> I, right I, can, I, I can be more cognizant and try to project towards that little thing sitting right there. I think I'm probably, I'm sure I was a big culprit with that because I got scolded a couple times, I think so. But I do forget about it and I feel like I'm just talking to everybody in the room and so being cognizant, maybe that's a good first start. Enunciate and speak mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a little eye-opening. So I, I'm putting my bow on it, <laughs> saying I am not sensing any particular action at this point. We're just being made aware of uh, this concern. We'll kind of keep our eye on it and um, see if we can not improve by um, speaking more clearly, enunciating, and um, see if the DEI committee has any recommendations for us from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else under items for of concern or future agenda? I feel left out, but I don't have one. <laughs> we'll make one for you. <laughs> okay. Um, public petitions. We have none. Public comments. Do we have any? Hands up in the audience, Abel. We have no attendees at this time. Okay, no public comment. Anything further for us? Uh, uh, no. All right, we are right on schedule, so I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And all in favor? We are adjourned. It's 714. Let's go. So